Hey, Redcon Raider here. And welcome back to the Alpha for Warhammer 40k, Rogue Trader. As today, we set our sights on System Speculo. What sinister secrets await us in this stellar stretch of space? Though right off the bat, I'd say the hostile ships gathered around the remains of another starship probably bears investigating. Who knows, maybe we'll actually get something out of a space battle aside from scrap for once. That would be a nice change of pace. I was also going to do some follow-up with Adira and the Voxmaster after last week's unfortunate incident, but um, it turns out they don't really have much to say just yet, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see if time unlocks additional dialogue or events in that regard. Or maybe it's just not implemented because this is still the Alpha. Either way, we've uh, certainly got no shortage of other stuff to do, so we'll just focus on that for a while. Onward, my friends! A report shows up on the Rogue Trader's personal cogitator screen. Unknown ships are towing the Interstellar Sextant, a cargo ship belonging to one of Footfall's wealthiest traders. It looks like the pirates have bitten off more than they can chew, and are now forced to drag the ship to a more secluded place, where they can plunder it undisturbed. Not if we have anything to say about it. As soon as they see you, the escort ships charge into battle at once, while the captive sextant powers up its warp engines. Unless the rogue trader interrupts the preparation for the jump, the cargo ship will forever vanish behind the Immaterium's veil along with all the riches it's carrying. Send all available forces to intercept the interstellar sextant! Don't let it get away! I can see crimson lights in the void. Oh dear. And our forward shields are almost gone. Off to a great start here. Okay, so we've got a frigate up front. I'm guessing that's the one we have to stop. And then a destroyer in back. I'm guessing that's the escort. I'm not sure if we have to destroy both of them or just the frigate. Thus far, it's always been destroy everyone. So we'll kind of have to play that by ear. Shield's still up, but they're definitely hurting. Set the course. Swing in closer. Torpedoes locked. Macro cannon falling. Fire right now. Lay in the course. Ah, crap, just outside our arc. Fair enough. Let's get our port side reinforced. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, they got two shots from their port guns. That hardly seems fair. That is perfect. Well, not quite perfect. We hit their starboard shields, but still not bad. Whoops. 
I don't think there's actually any way we could have tagged them with our forward guns. Another salvo. Oh, actually. Yes. This one's going down. Excellent. Uh, reinforce forward. And what the heck, let's get a warp wiggle in there too. Okay, okay, yeah, we can work with that. That warp wiggle is actually really working out for us. Slightly worried about those torpedoes. Oh, shoot. I didn't realize we had another escort behind us. That is slightly problematic. But we are good on the torpedoes. We'll stay on the frigate. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, that, that works. Set the course. Too far for the starboard. Maybe if we... No, no, better to hit with the forward guns. Torpedoes out. We can actually manually control torpedoes now, as per Argenta's Master of Ordnance ability. But we have to wait a full round after launching them. Shields on rare. Warp wiggle? Oh, hey. Okay. I've really got to use that move more often. Escort incoming. Other one trying to circle back around. Torpedoes out. Frigate on the run. But not fast enough. And moving in for the kill. We'll see if we can maybe chip away at that escort behind it, too. The time has come. Macro cannons, volley! Bring it down. Lay in the course. Forward guns. Them. Shields down. Full power to forward. Oh, come on. Third escort incoming. Forward shields down. 
We could really use a shield reset. Okay, we do need to reset our shields, but we can't afford to do it just yet. Bootleg reverse. Stay on the escorts. We need to drop torpedoes. The time has come. We'll use them as a distraction. Unleash our vengeful salvo! This one's going down. Shields breached. Another salvo! Oh, nice. And that's it. Uh, reinforce shields. Left. Would have gone front, but those are gone. Okay, okay. Left's gone, but that wasn't too bad. That was slightly worse, but still not too bad. Thankfully, these escorts have weak guns. Let's finish this guy off. Okay, should should be an easy finish. Warp wiggle? Uh, that's not terrible. Fire right now. Forces him to spend time turning at least. Actually, Fire the batteries. I think we can do a reset this round. And cycling shields. Yep, yep, okay. We can live with that. Oh, for goodness sake, are you serious? How many escorts are there? Oh boy, oh boy, okay. Uh, let's stay on the guy in front of us. Shields are back up, so we're actually in pretty good shape. We are going to win this, it's just like, when, when do they stop coming Fire right now This one's going down Escort out I guess we could launch torps. They might fly in front of them. Annihilate them. Set the course. Might also draw fire, so dual purpose. Oh, we're done. Another victory for the Von Valencia's dynasty. Okay, okay. I guess it was a timed fight. That's why the escorts just kept coming. I'm guessing if we hadn't finished off the frigate, we would have lost 
at this point. Um, okay, fair enough. Yeah, I, I just feel like they really could have made that a little clearer with, like, a counter or something. All right, let's uh, see what that got us. Pirate chainmail, sure. And a repulsor shield. 50 shields for each facing. Double against enemy impact. Interesting. I think that's actually the third ship component we found thus far. I really need to figure out how to actually equip this stuff. Um, thus far, I have yet to find any way to open our ship interface. It might be something we can only do from very specific locations. It's fine, though. We're doing okay so far, so, I mean, it's not a pressing matter. All right, net gain on scrap, plus some uh, other assorted goodies. Not bad. Let's hit these planets. Step world. Help me, step world, I'm stuck. Inappropriate. Adamantium? That's not even on our resource tracker. So what happens if we collect that? Oh, it just adds it to the tracker. Okay, fair enough. That is weird. Like, why would they list other resources we have zero of, but not that particular one? That... Okay, whatever. That's fine. It's a minor quibble. My brain just craves consistent presentation. Pretty. Loot cash. We'll take that. Aldari plasma grenades. Low power frags with a blinding effect. Plus a forbidden Xenos compendium. Plus five on Xenos lore. Which we really haven't gotten much use out of just yet, but I imagine that'll change as we get further into the act. They're clearly setting us up for some Xenos fights. I mean, heck, we've got Dark Eldar right on the key art. Let's hit Jungle World. Oh ho, we have a landing point. Okay. Plus a, a Xenotech extraction point which is another resource we don't have on our resource tracker but now we do maybe they're rare resources I guess <laughs> I, I don't know let's check this place out uh, sorry Abelard looks like you're back on the bench buddy The servitor looks past you, not noticing your presence. Okay. Weird they led with that, but sure. Happy to serve you, your lordship. That, that's great. Just do your job. Alright guys, calm down. Inside the containers are the remnants of stones and frescoes 
depicting a black spot surrounded by structures of some sort. Oh, that... That's not where I thought you were going to go. I won't tolerate weakness. Time and weather have almost wholly erased the writing left by an unknown author. The darkness swirls beneath your feet, a void of impenetrable gloom. You do not hear a single sound from the depths of the pit. No wailing wind, no rustle of dust. The bright daylight cannot pierce the darkness lying over the slopes. The longer you look into its depths, the stronger the feeling grows that this darkness isn't just an absence of light. It is something immeasurably vast, endless, capable of reaching the farthest stars or swallowing a galaxy. Through sheer force of will, you avert your gaze. Heinrichs peers into the darkness and the depths of the pit. You feel the touch of an otherworldly chill. The interrogator arches an eyebrow. Whatever this, hmm, phenomenon may be, there is no warp sorcery within it. Creepy. Adira tilts her head to the side, listening to something. Then she scowls and spits on the ground. Who the hell knows what it is? It's beyond my remit. Weird. I have no idea what that is. So it's not warp, it's not... chaos? What else could it possibly be? A new challenge for me? Numerous ropes and cables end abruptly at the very edge of the pit, vanishing into the gathering darkness. Oh, good. They were sending people in there to investigate. That that always ends well. Ancient data slate. Is that... No. Oh, okay. I was hoping that was something we could actually read for some background info or, or data or something, but... Um, no, no, that was just cargo. It got added to our cargo manifest. It's weird. My mind is completely empty. Not a single whisper. No premonitions. Nothing. Just... empty. Oh, here we go. Field diary. It has been several months since we arrived here, and yet we are no closer to understanding the local phenomenon. All that we were able to learn quite literally lies on the surface. The object does not reflect sound or light. On the contrary, it very much absorbs them. After extensive excavation, we did ascertain, at least, that the object is vast and goes deep below the planet's surface. However, any attempts to measure it resulted in loss of machinery or staff. Archaeological studies have turned out to be more productive. Their findings have revealed an amalgamation of architectural styles of various cultures, including those of Xenos origin. According to the boldest theories, the earliest of these structures dates from the beginning of the 30th millennium, and all of them are, without a doubt, of a religious nature. Analysis of bas reliefs and remaining epigraphic texts shows that a cult was formed around the object. For many centuries, Xenos and subsequently humans worshipped the object in exchange for certain boons, undoubtedly imagined by primitive or corrupted minds. Yeah, yeah, I guess that tracks. Doesn't really give us much in the way of answers, but it is... It's something.
Archaeotech Magnocular. The witch's mind is at ease. I must be doubly on my guard. These ancient cogitators are long dead. Despite this, the covers of the machines are still intact. It seems unlikely that the inner parts were ruined by the elements, so they could still prove useful. So the implication here is that the researchers have been gone for a while. The surface is covered in countless scratches, and you can discern some logic in them. Someone began by scratching strange symbols, but then defaced them, adding extra marks and lines. Rudimentary tools and devices are now covered in a layer of dirt and local flora. And we can't go any further. So what are we supposed to do here? I'm not seeing any obvious course. We have a long abandoned research station. We have a mysterious phenomenon. We have signs of madness, perhaps? Or deliberate obfuscation of their research? I'll lay claim to the stars. We haven't gotten any journal entries. Let's have another look at the pit. Now that we've looked at everything else, maybe it'll trigger something. No, no, no. Nothing there. None shall stand in my way. Oh, weird. There's like a deliberate vocal distortion effect near the anomaly. There must be something else we can do here. They wouldn't have put this much effort into it if it was just scenery. But uh, maybe maybe we just don't have the associated quest yet. It's about time. All right, well, whatever we're supposed to do here, we clearly can't do it just yet. I guess, I guess we'll leave for now. We'll put a pin in this and come back to it later. Yeah, yeah, it's still tagged as a point of interest, so we must have an excuse to come back here later. I am intrigued, but for now we move on. Emperor's Palm, now on our map. Um... You know what, let's um, let's hold off on Telecos Prime for the moment. We've only got about 10 or 15 minutes left anyway, and uh, we've completely regened our profit factor, so that gives us a good excuse to head back to Forabundus and hit Footfall Station. While traveling through the Immaterium, the crew on duty and loading Bay 7 heard what sounded like the hissing of a giant snake. The terrified worker sent out a Vox message then locked themselves in a shipping container and welded it shut. The response team sent to the bay found no signs of wharf activity. Unfortunately, by the time they arrived, the workers had suffocated. The ship left the hostile immaterium and returned to real space. Oh, well, I guess that happened. Just another day in the warp, I guess. M moving on.
The clan servicing the cooling systems have reported an incident of sorcery. The shadows in the cabins and corridors are coming to life. The voidsmen say they see strange writhing things lurk in nooks and crannies at the edge of their vision. If they look away, the things spread over the room, gnawing on everything in their path and attacking the weak and infirm. The strange creatures cannot be caught. It is almost as if they sense they are being watched and sink into the many cracks between the machines and bulkheads. Oh, well, that's lovely. And possibly related to that weird jungle planet we were just on, I guess. Um, I somehow don't see fire helping us. This is a setting where faith is a tangible force, especially with psychics. So we should probably give that a shot. The Ecclesiarchy mission on board the void ship held sermons in every corner of the haunted chamber. The many voice chants and holy rituals manifested their power, and the daemon skulking in the cracks vanished without a trace. The crew was cheered, and they praised the God Emperor for his protection. Ah, good. Problem solved. And I guess if it was daemons, it's not related to the jungle planet. Since Heinrich seemed pretty confident that wasn't related to the Immaterium. Actually, aren't, uh... Aren't Necrons related to some sort of weird darkness fields? Keep in mind, most of my memories of the setting are from before the time they officially introduced Necrons as a playable army. Lord Captain, the situation on Foulstone requires your attention. A pilgrim has publicly declared that St. Drusus sends him revelations in his dreams. There are undocumented reports claiming that he has performed miracles. For as long as the authenticity of this prophet remains to be verified, Raelit Hectarchius has denied him entry into the temples of the Order of the Hammer. Meanwhile, the young man preaches in the streets, gathering his own flock. What is to be done about him, your lordship? What do we know about this so-called prophet? Tybor Hike, a void builder from Footfall. He now prefers to be called Brother Pure Voice, an unremarkable commoner with no family. His first revelation came to him when he disembarked from a pilgrim ship on Foulstone. His sermons are directed at commoners, appealing to them for humility and mercy. No anarchical pronunciations or radical deviations from the creed have been found in his words as of yet. Hmm. I wish to hear the opinions of my advisors. False prophets in the street are a common occurrence. Their sermons breed turmoil, riots, and acts of disobedience. The Inquisition recommends that such unstable agents be isolated and quietly removed. Interesting. The archenemy's lies take on many guises, but the Emperor's miracles are a hundredfold stronger. On more than a few occasions, he has bestowed epiphanies upon the faithful even those of the humblest origin. I myself bear the name of a poor orphan who has granted miraculous powers by his grace. So give me time and I will find you the most loyal agents to guard Brother Pure Voice. They will keep him safe if he is pure, or punish him should they sense deceit in his words. But I have a feeling that his visions are a true wonder. Right, so basically the opposite of what Heinrich suggested. True advocates of faith are rare. Most preachers contending for the status of saint turn out to be ambitious liars, madmen, or agents working for the enemies of humankind. Well, this is tricky. There are some potential gains, but there's a lot more potential risks. As has been highlighted by both Heinrich and Vigdis, 
Not to mention the Order of the Hammer already feels threatened with the refugees there. Let alone with someone trying to undermine their divine authority. Heinrich, I trust you can take care of this. I'll see to it that his disappearance is sufficiently mysterious so that the believers delve into speculations about his ascension instead of trying to look for the truth. Oh, good, yes, uh, thanks. I was really hoping for more plausible deniability, but I appreciate your candor. The pure voice prophet mysteriously vanished. Rumors of his miraculous ascension immediately spread among the rabble, and soon there were those claiming to have witnessed the event. The cult of St. Drusus is pleased that the suspicious prophet, preaching on its behalf, troubles the faithful no longer. Oh, okay, well, good. That was actually the biggest concern, was that the, that the cult of St. Drusus might take exception to us disappearing one of their prophets. But apparently not. Alright, let's go have a chat with Opticon. Access has been granted to the following options. Information exchange, strengthening of diplomatic links, trade deals, donations. Opticon, my friend. I've collected that planetary data you were inquiring about. Mayhaps we can now broker a deal? With a respectful nod, the tech priest takes the data slate. The collected data is of interest, significant, compliant with criteria for cooperation. The Cognizance fleet thanks you for your contribution and guarantees the provision of a reciprocal service indulgence in the form of parts and equipment. Reporting, the Kappa Thread supply line is ready to continue cooperation with the Von Valencius dynasty in the sphere of planetary reconnaissance. Ah, and look at that, we still have the option to turn in planet data, which implies it's a repeatable quest we can use to continue harvesting rep. I was hoping you might have a new quest for us, but that's fine. I can work with that. Hopefully the extra planets we already scanned will count towards the next batch. I'd also like to potentially buy stuff from him, but we'll hold off on that for now. I'll do that off screen. We only have 48 profit factor to play with, so I do have to be careful with how we parcel it out. Okay, let's go have words with the local liege lord. A new challenge for me. Fladame! Greetings, your lordship. The liege stares at Heinrichs. Slowly, very slowly, Fladame nods to him as well. Van Kalox? Heinrichs responds with an equally reserved nod. Good day, liege. I'm accompanying the rogue trader. Please, pay no mind to my presence. Your request is difficult to fathom, and even more so to honor. But I'm glad to hear there aren't other reasons for this visit, unlike your two previous ones. Interesting. Apparently Heinrich gets around. It does make sense, though, considering that Vladame is neck deep in the local Xenos trade. Otherwise, nothing new here. We might actually have to finish the uh, provision side quest before we can trigger whatever the next series of events are. But let's uh, let's have a look at the quarantine zone. 
just in case. Oh, I uh, guess I clicked on the bar instead. That's fine. Let's uh, let's go have words with the bartender. See if she has any new rumors for us. The bartender appears to be gone. Hopefully that's not a bug. Uh, but regardless, I guess I guess there's not much else we can do here. Again, I would actually like to browse the wares for the uh, trader in the back room, but I'll take care of that off screen. Let's hit the uh, quarantine zone. None shall stand in my way. And it looks like it's still sealed. All right, all right. I guess it's pretty safe to say we do have to secure our provision planet before we can trigger whatever's supposed to happen here next. Attention creditors and other interested parties. Jay Hidari was seen in the company of an unknown affluent figure. A new patron, perhaps? Alright folks, uh, you know I could keep wandering, but I'm getting the impression we're not really going to see anything of note here. But um, that's fine, I still wanted to end here, on the station I mean. So we could take care of some off-screen trading, bookkeeping, dump some of our cargo, stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll hit the pause button for now, I'll take care of the off-screen bookkeeping, pick up a new toy or two. And we'll pick up here next time, as we either focus on anything interesting I happen to find while we're here, or, as we head back to Telecos Major? Telecos Prime? I've actually been told that we're apparently barely halfway through the Alpha, so there's plenty more for us to do. And, uh, well, I'm not sure we'll run through the whole thing. We'll stick with it as long as the numbers stay up and uh, people seem interested. As always, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and we'll pick up here next time. See you then! Oh, and uh, special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Including, but not limited to, Dragon Matrix 7, Matthew Smith, Revenant, Aloise, Dracith, Egg, Yuri V23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatly, James Tremier, Kazorm, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Farum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Piatkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrug. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the Patreon, the YouTube memberships, or the Nexus GG page. Links are in the description. None shall stand in my way.